All right, so this is section 2.2, .2, properties of functions. All right, we're going to look at odd and even functions, um, increasing, decreasing, or constant, local max and min, absolute max and absolute min, and how we use a graphing utility to find that, and then end with the average rate of change. So the first thing we're going to look at is odd and even functions. So if a function is even, when you put a negative x in, you'll get out the original function. When a function is odd, if you put in a negative value for x, you'll get out the entire, the opposite of the entire function. So here's our theorem. A function is even if and only if its graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So we've seen this before when we talked about symmetry. A function is odd if and only if its graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. And we saw that in our symmetry section. So when we look at these graphs, we're going to determine whether they are even, odd, or neither. So we look at this guy just based on its shape. It's symmetric with respect to the y, so we're going to say that it's even. And b, we look, it doesn't have um, symmetry with respect to the origin, because remember those were the, it, it, you could tell it had the same coordinate in the diagonal planes. So this is neither. And if we look at this one, this looks like origin symmetry, so it's odd. All right, so now let's do that. that. This is just from the graphs, just by looking at the graphs. Let's do it by actually calculating something. All right, so we're going to use a graphing utility to tell whether the function's odd, even, or neither. And then we're going to use algebra to determine if it's symmetric. So if we graph x squared minus 5, we get, so if we graph y equals x squared minus 5, we get this nice parabola. And just by looking at this, we say it is even because of the symmetry, symmetry with the y-axis. And then we plug it in to our equation. We plug negative x in. When we get it here, we square it, so it becomes x squared, which is the same as the original function. So we prove it with algebra that it's even. All right, so we got x cubed minus 1. Here's its graph. There's no apparent symmetry, so we can't make a conjecture. And when we plug in negative x, we get negative x cubed gives us negative on the outside and x cubed, and the minus 1 just stays minus 1. Since the original function is not equal to when we put a negative, it's definitely not even. And when we take the negative of the entire function, we get negative x cubed plus 1. And that is not equal to when we put in the negative value. So it is not odd either. So this is neither. So we look at our last function. It's 5x cubed minus x. We look at the graph, and it does look like it has symmetry with the origin. It looks like it's an odd function. So we put in negative x to test for even. We can look at it's not even. Um, but we just test it. And we get negative 5x cubed plus x which is the opposite of our original function, so that's proving that it's odd. All right, so now we're going to look at increasing, decreasing, or constant. I love this section because it's mega easy. Um, I think a two-year-old could probably do increasing, decreasing, or constant. All right, so a function is increasing. If you go, you increase in your x value and your y value increases. 
It's decreasing if you increase in your x value and your y values decrease. And it's constant if there is no change as your x value increases, um, your y values stay the same. So increasing means y is getting bigger, decreasing is y is getting smaller, and constant means it doesn't change. Easy, piece of cake. Uh, local max and min. Um, local means we're, we're not looking at the entire graph, we're just focusing on um, one specific, specific area. So it's got a local max if it is, has the highest y value um, in that zone, and it's a local min if it has the smallest y value in that zone. All right, so if we look at what values of x, if any, does f have a local maximum? So we can see, we got this kind of wavy curve right here at 1, 2, that's the local max. Local minimum, well, if we look at just this interval where x goes from negative infinity to 0, negative 1, 1 is a local min. Um, and if we look at this um, graph from 0 to positive infinity, then uh, 3 comma 0 is a local min. So it has a local min at negative 1 and 3. And then the last question is find the intervals on which f is increasing, find where it's decreasing. So if I'm starting here at negative infinity, and I go all the way down to negative 1, I'm decreasing. So then, um, so from negative infinity to negative 1, I'm decreasing. That's right there. And then from 1 to, for, sorry, from negative 1 to 1, I'm increasing. From 1 to 3, I'm decreasing and 3 to infinity I'm increasing. So uh, the function is increasing on the intervals from negative 1 to 1 and 3 to infinity and it is decreasing from negative infinity to 1 and 1 to 3. Alright so this is my favorite part we're going to use a graph to locate absolute max and absolute min. So an absolute max occurs where your graph has the highest y value. And an absolute min occurs where your graph has the smallest minimum, the smallest y value. So for this instance, right here, this u value is our absolute max, and this v value is our absolute min for this section of graph. Okay, so let's see how that looks. For each graph, y equals f of x, find the absolute max, absolute min if they exist. So let's look. You can see these, these graphs end and begin um, in this one little section. So for the graph A, the absolute max is at 3, 6, and the absolute min is at 0, 1. For B, with a nice little smiley, shape, smiley face shape, the absolute max is at this 5, 3. The absolute min would be here, but there's a hole here. So because I can keep getting closer and closer and closer to this hole, I have no absolute min. So when your absolute min is a whole, you have none. For this graph here, we look, our absolute max is 5, 4. And you look, we have a nice constant graph between 1, 1, and 2, 1. So my absolute min is 1 on the interval between 1 and 2. For this D, I have no absolute max because if you can see this little line goes on forever to infinity and making it impossible for us to have an absolute max. But I do have an absolute min at 0, 0. And if I look at this nice little graph, he goes on forever to infinity 
um, as we get closer to x equals 5. Um, so I have no absolute max, and my absolute min is a whole, so I have no absolute min. The extreme value theorem says if f is a continuous function um, on the interval a, b, then f has an absolute min and an absolute max on that interval. So that means no holes. So if we have a set interval and we have a continuous function, then I'm going to have a max and a min. All right, using a graphing utility to approximate local max and local min and determine where the functions increase and are de decreasing. So if I look at <clears throat> the graph of f of x equals 6x cubed minus 12x plus 5 between negative 2 and 2, where the local max and the local min. So I used Desmos for here. And all I had to do, these points were already here. So I just clicked on each of the important points. They gave me the intercepts, which for this case, I don't need the intercepts. Um, but I did find a local max here at negative eight, negative point eight one six comma eleven point five three two. I found a local min here at point eight one six comma negative one point five three two, and we are increasing from negative two to negative point eight one six. And we're increasing from 0.816 to 2. We are decreasing from negative 0.816 to positive 0.816. That's as hard as that gets, just looking at the graph. This is going to be new. We have an average rate of change function. It's our change in y over our change in x. So we're going to take our b value, plug it into our function, and our a value and plug it into our function, and then subtract the two functions. We're going to divide that by our b value minus our a value. And as long as a is not equal to b, we are all just fine. Okay, so let's take a look at that application. If f of x is equal to 3x squared, what is my average rate of change from 1 to 3? So I plug in 3 and I plug in 1 into my function. I get out 27 minus 3. I plug in 3 and 1 into my a and b. Simplify that down, I get 24 over 2, or I get 12. All right, so from 1 to 5, I use 5 in my function to get 75, 1 in my function to get 3. Subtract those, divide it by 5 minus 1. I get 72 divided by 4. And lastly, but not leastly, if I want to find the average rate of change from 1 to 7, plug in 7 minus when I plug in 1, simplify it down, divided by 7 minus 1, which is 6, and I get 24. All right, so the secant line takes the average rate of change and makes it a slope. And we are going to find the equation of a secant line by finding the average rate of change and then um, using the point to create the line and then graphing the line. So the average rate of change from negative 2 to 1 is g of 1 minus g of negative 2. And that's 4 minus 19 divided by 1 minus negative 2, which is 3. We get negative 15 over 3, which is negative 5. Then we're going to find the equation by using the slope of negative 5, and we're going to use point slope, which if we use the point negative 2, 19, we plug in 19 for the y1, negative 2 for the x1. I get y minus 19 equals, and then negative 5 in for the slope. Then I simplify it down, distribute out a negative 5, and then I add 19 to both sides. So my equation of the line is y equals negative 5x plus 9, and then the graph of that looks like this. 
that?